We, we've run a survey of all our members as well, and it's come back very clearly that workload um, is the overwhelming um, issue that they face on a day-to-day -day basis, and that comes back to the paperwork that they're having to do. The yeah, fact it's not that the they, teaching. No, no, no. It's, it's not, not the it's, academic workload. No. It's, the, it's the garbage the government's asked them to do. Absolutely. It comes back to that, and it, and it also goes to um, you know, a number of different issues. But, um, yeah, it suggests that the big issue within... Um, the education system is that it is all centralised. So going local looks like um, running those schools locally, cutting useless bureaucrats, and then you're able to actually uh, pay the teachers properly. So we, we, the, you hear all this um, kerfuffle around, um, you know, certain EBs, and it's you know there's been so many failed ones by the QTU recently, um, and it's talking about two or three percent pay rises. There needs to be a complete shift the way that the system is run, and you can have 20% pay rises for teachers. And it's not money coming out of thin air. It's putting bureaucrats who are trained in teaching and can actually teach back in the classroom. And it's, it's telling the others, well, sorry, you know, you're not required anymore. When schools are run locally, that is enabled. You know, expelling unruly students is another big one as well. Um, the discipline issue in schools is one that is brought up with me on a daily basis. And obviously our, our fifth pillar of that Go Local plan is to be able to you know, reform the teaching degrees that we've just spoken about. Yeah, so it's the, it's the university system, I suppose you want to cut it back a little bit, get it a little bit tighter. Um, the, the courses are quite long mm. and there's a heck of a lot of waffle and padding in there. And I find mature age people, I mean, I tried to get into, te you know, consider yeah. doing a teaching degree. It's like now two years for a postgrad, mm. and I wasn't even accepted mm. um, on the basis of some of my professional capability. Yep. It was extraordinary. You wouldn't think that there's a teacher shortage, would you? <laughs> no, you wouldn't think there was a teacher shortage. So many uh, mature age people that would like to yep. do it as a great way to part, impart their knowledge mm. to kids um, in, later in life. But yep. we're not. There's no pathway for that. It appears there's actually a, a, a wall being put up. Yeah, and that's why I think we should have. Um, paid placement in these schools for, for learning teachers because you can have that one to two years of content where you, you get up to date with everything that you need to be able to teach, but you're actually learning how to teach from experienced teachers in schools yeah. every day. Yeah. You're not being taught these abstract concepts by professors that haven't taught a day in their life. Um, no, it's it, brainwashing and it's effectively just their own, yeah. driving their own agenda and keeping their own jobs. Basically. Absolutely, it's that and it's just completely inefficient. Um, we've got a teacher shortage crisis. Yes, these um, you know, student teachers would need to be supervised, but would, it would allow for a lot of uh, non-contact time for current teachers um, and it would help you know, address in some way the teacher shortage and ultimately would mean that they're a lot more prepared when they graduate. Well, the libertarian and classical liberal kind of economist thinkers would say that the voucher system puts the power in the hands of where it should be, which is the client, yep. which are the parents mm -hmm. and the students, right? And it takes the power, and this is probably why the teachers' unions, the traditional teachers' unions and the Labor Party and everybody don't like it, because yep. it takes the power away from the teachers. Mm. But in actual fact, it only takes the power away from the bad teachers, it doesn't take the power away from the good teachers, which is the other reason they don't like it, because they hate hierarchy. They hate the thought that a good teacher is going to get paid more and a bad teacher is going to get paid less. Yeah. Um, they don't want that competition that we all, the rest of us all have in business, right, mm. um, of, of having to perform. You know, you've really got to, and then getting rewarded properly for your performance if you're a really great teacher. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that the voucher system and many of our proposals uh, for going local does provide, it's accountability because at the moment, yeah. there is just no one held accountable for, everyone says there's a problem, oh, there's a teacher shortage crisis. We, we have reports come out and say, you know, our teachers uh, are struggling, our students aren't doing as well as they could be. Um, it's very dire, but who's the buck stopping with? Yeah. It's currently yeah. no one because it's also centralized yeah. and it's also faceless. If you bring it to a local level, students and teach, sorry, teachers and principals are accountable at a local level. Yeah. Teach, teach, good teachers, like you said, are more than happy to be held accountable for the way that they teach. There's Just the, let them teach. Exactly. Don't force them to do all this admin and 100%, you know, accounting yeah. back to the central authority. Exactly. Yeah, control education, control media, you control the culture. Mm. And that's what this is really all about, right? It is it's about a, control. It's a very serious uh, part of the culture war, if you like, if we're going to get Australia back uh, from the left. I love this. So there was a University of Canberra student, final year student, who told the Australian about his course that he was doing mm. at uni. And um, there's a slide that one of the lecturers had about postmodernist writing. And the slide had a rambling, incomprehensible 92 word sentence. And I'm gonna read it to you. Please <laughs> it's do. It's this. 
The move from a structuralist account in which capital is understood to structure social relations in relatively homologous ways to a view of hegemony, in which power relations are subject to repetition, convergence and rearticulation, brought the question of temporality into the thinking of structure and marked a shift from a form of theory that takes structural totalities as theoretical objects to one in which the insights into the contingent possibility of structure inaugurate a renewed conception of hegemony as bound up with the contingent sites and strategies of the rearticulation of power. Beautifully put. Isn't that great? <laughs> imagine, what the hell I mean, is it? imagine taking notes on that, and this is what it comes back to. There, that's one example, there would be thousands. Yeah. Taking notes on that in a class or trying to have to uh, put up with that sort of thing, would you not prefer as a student teacher to be in a classroom getting prepared for when you graduate? Yeah. Be in a classroom, sorry, in a classroom in an actual school that is, not in a university hall. Um, I know you're politically neutral, but you know, as a classical liberal, one of the great things about socialists is that nobody can actually understand them, I find, so <laughs> it's very helpful for us. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so great to hear about that Go Local campaign. I think it's fantastic. 